Eartha Mary Magdalene White was widely known for her humanitarian and philanthropic endeavors throughout Jacksonville and Northeast Florida. Born on November 8, 1876, Eartha was adopted by Lafayette and Clara English White. After Lafayette's death in 1881, Clara White supported herself and Eartha by working as a maid and later as a hotel and steamboat stewardess on the Clyde Steamship Line, which carried passengers up and down the East Coast between Florida and New York. In 1893, upon graduation from Stanton School in Jacksonville, Eartha White moved to New York City to avoid the yellow fever quarantine in Jacksonville. She attended the Madam Hall Beauty School and Madam Thurber's National Conservatory of Music. The latter affiliation led to a position with the Oriental American Opera Company, known as the first African American Opera Company in the United States. A lyric soprano, she sang under the direction of Jacksonville native J. Rosamond Johnson. After a highly successful opening at the Palmer Theater on Broadway in New York City, the troupe traveled for a year throughout the United States and Europe. Eartha White returned to Florida in 1896 and continued her education at the Florida Baptist Academy. Upon her graduation, Eartha secured a teaching appointment in Bayard, Florida, and later at Stanton School in Jacksonville. Her 16-year teaching career was only part of her professional activities. At the same time, Miss White displayed her considerable business acumen, evidenced by various entrepreneurial enterprises, including her ownership of a dry goods store, an employment bureau, a janitorial contracting service for office buildings, a taxi service, and a steam laundry with the motto, put your duds in our suds, we wash anything but a dirty conscience. Her versatility and determination also enabled her to become a licensed real estate broker, the first woman employee of the Afro-American Life Insurance Company in Jacksonville, and a charter member of both the National Negro Business League and Jacksonville Business League. Due to her numerous businesses and astute real estate transactions, it is estimated that she accumulated over $1 million in assets throughout her lifetime, all of which she used to fund her humanitarian works in Jacksonville. Eartha White's work and influence also extended to political activities. Through her participation in and loyalty to the Republican Party, she campaigned for moderate candidates. Eartha was an active member of the City Federation of Colored Women's Clubs of Jacksonville, headed the Negro Republican Women's Voters in 1920, was a founding member and the director of the Florida Anti-Lynching Crusaders Committee, and helped form the Colored Citizens Protective League in Jacksonville. In 1941, she joined with A. Philip Randolph to protest job discrimination, and at the age of 87, Eartha attended the 1963 Civil Rights March on Washington. In her later years, Eartha became an influential force whom Jacksonville politicians consulted on diverse issues and who routinely granted her social welfare requests. Former Jacksonville Mayor Hans Tanzler was quoted in a 1982 Florida Times Union article as saying, at least once a month, she'd come up to my office at City Hall. She was irrepressible and undeniable. She only came up to my waist, but she'd point that little finger at me and she'd tell me God has chosen you and you must do this, that, and the other thing. Clara's faith and humanitarian activities had instilled in Eartha a lifelong commitment to helping others. Mother and daughter became a deeply committed team to aid those in need before Clara's death in 1920. Eartha White embraced her mother's motto as her own, 
Do all the good you can in all the ways you can in all the places you can for all the people you can while you can. Eartha White donated most of the profits from her businesses and private investments to fund humanitarian works and, as a consequence, struggled financially throughout her life. Aptly nicknamed the Angel of Mercy, friends recall her countless acts of charity. She was often called to aid traveling families who had broken down on Jacksonville roads. Her work with Duval County stockade prisoners was legendary. For more than 40 years, Eartha visited inmates, arranged for religious and social activities, and provided counseling and other personal services for them. During World War I and II, her many patriotic activities included intensive work with the Red Cross to aid both soldiers and their families. The development of the Clara White mission in particular encapsulate Eartha White's commitment to helping humanity. In the 1880s, Clara White began feeding the needy from a soup kitchen based in her two-room house on Clay Street. In 1904, the Clara White mission was founded, and shortly after Clara's death, Eartha made plans to move the mission to a facility that would provide for larger crowds. The former Globe Theater, located at 611 to 613 West Ashley Street, was purchased for the mission and dedicated at the opening to the memory of Clara White. Opening shortly before the Great Depression in 1929, the Clara White mission served all people, regardless of race, color, or creed, and continues to do so to this day. Located on the second floor of the Clara White Mission, along with the rest of her living quarters, Eartha White's office was her center of operations. In addition to community services of the mission, Eartha set up a free employment agency, organized the WPA Writers Project, started a sewing room that provided employment for women, and provided training for the blind to learn Braille, make baskets, and cane chairs. In 1944, a fire destroyed much of the building, but with her characteristic determination, Eartha raised the funding to rebuild and even expand the original structure. Eartha White's most enduring legacy is her zeal for helping the underprivileged. Her accomplishments include her extensive social work with prison inmates, providing a nursery for children of working mothers, providing classes in homemaking, creating a tuberculosis rest home, founding the Boys Improvement Club, and building the Eartha M. M. White Nursing Home. Every year, Eartha would organize day trips to Manhattan Beach for the aged, blind, orphaned, and needy as well as month-long fresh air camps for children with tuberculosis. The Florida East Coast Railway provided free transportation for the participants, as the letter on Eartha White's desk indicates. The photographs next to the letter show what Manhattan Beach looked like at the time. Much like today, Eartha White relied on her telephone for communication. It is very different than a modern cell phone, using a handset to listen and talk, and using a rotary dial to enter the number she was calling. As a heartbeat of the mission, Eartha White lived on its second floor. Grace Bateman, Eartha's secretary for almost 30 years, commented that she never needed more than a couple of hours of sleep a night. With all of Eartha White's activities, she had little time left for a private life. During her time with the Oriental American Opera Company, Eartha fell in love and was engaged to James Lloyd Jordan of South Carolina, a railway employee. Their wedding was planned for June of 1896. However, a month prior to the nuptials, James Jordan passed away while Eartha was traveling with the opera company. After Jane's death, it is said that she determined not to marry 
Instead, she would dedicate her life to concentrating on the needs of others. Later in life, Eartha commented, I never married. I was too busy. What man would put up with me running around the way I do? Eartha's letters from James, along with his photograph, are all that remain to tell the story of Eartha's lost romance. Clara White was a founding member of Jacksonville's Bethel Baptist Institutional Church, and Eartha was an active member of the congregation throughout her life. Eartha's religious convictions inspired her humanitarian works. Her Bible is on display in her bedroom, along with some of her hats that she wore to church and social occasions. Eartha White was honored for the work she did supporting the Jacksonville community. She received the Booker T. Washington Symbol of Service Award twice in her lifetime. In 1936, she accepted an Honorary Doctor of Humanities degree from Florida Memorial Institute, and in 1961, she received an Honorary Doctor of Law degree from Edward Waters College. Awards and honors were numerous towards the end of Eartha White's life. The Jacksonville JCs gave Eartha the Good Citizenship Award in 1969. In 1970, at the age of 94, she received national recognition by being named the recipient of the 1970 Lane Bryant Award for Volunteer Service. After being honored at a reception at the White House with President Nixon, she quite characteristically responded to the question of how she would spend the cash award. I've already decided I want it to serve humanity. What would I do with it? Sit around the Plaza Hotel? I'm too busy. In 1971, Eartha was appointed to the President's National Center for Voluntary Action Board of Directors and received a standing ovation when she took her seat. Also, in 1971, Eartha was awarded a certificate naming her Florida's Outstanding Senior Citizen by then-Governor Reuben Askew. Eartha White died of heart failure at age 97 on January 18, 1974.